Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So we are going to do a fairly short video here today. It's a request and simply because it's it's Independence Day, it's a holiday. Um, I've been doing some important things throughout the day. Um, and uh, pretty much I just uh, I just wanted to do something quick and simple. I would usually do a distro review today, um, but uh, somebody did ask very specific about a, a software package and uh, that is KeyPass X. Um, so KeyPass X is a great password manager for Linux and uh, I use this, I don't use this for all of my passwords. Um, I have one of my contracts requires us to use a password manager for any passwords that we use with that project. And so I use KeyPass X for that. Um, I don't use, um, uh, I do not use uh, the uh, the other managers uh, that are out there. Like I don't use a manager for other things in my life. I have other ways that I manage passwords. But real briefly, we'll talk about the different ways you can manage passwords. So um, of course you can do your online password managers and these are just absolutely dangerous. Um, they're huge hack targets, you know, they, they provide a convenience. The convenience is you'll have one login to that particular thing, hopefully with a good two-factor authentication, and then that would allow you to access, you know, you don't have to have the password database on each individual device that you're accessing from, which also means you can access it from a friend's computer without a problem. Um, but that is the only advantage of those, and the disadvantages for me way outweigh the the issues with that, um, because the uh, you know the other the other issues that that you would encounter is uh, online password managers are huge hacking targets. People are always trying to get into them because they contain you know this huge wealth of information, and in reality, they're not really secured. They're not like secured so much better. These are just companies. They're looking to make a buck and anything they can do to save a buck so they can make another buck is probably what they're going to do. So I don't trust them for that. In fact, there was even a, a fairly high profile case uh, this uh, this last couple of weeks ago where somebody did successfully get into one of these online password managers and it is very possible that the hackers end up walking away with full database tables. We just don't know what they have. And it's just better to not have all that stuff online. Now, if you are utilizing friends' computers a lot, then you simply should not, not ever be using your friend's computer for anything. If you need to use your friend's computer, get yourself a little hard drive, like a little USB drive like this. This guy here does have a little thing in there and you can loop a little wire into here and put this on your keychain. And if you happen to be at a friend's house and you need to access it, just plug this guy right in, boot off of this on your friend's computer, and this is your own computer that's just simply operating off your friend's hardware. You can have your copy of your password manager on this. And so it kind of takes care of that, that issue. Just use a little USB key. It's not like you need to be doing something super high powered on a friend's computer anyway. Um, and of course you can uh, export databases and export a database and import it into another instance of this. So it's not like, you know, you don't have to go into every computer that you're running a password manager and repeat all of the steps. Um, but what we are gonna do here is we're going to walk through how to, uh, how to set up KeyPassX, how to use it, all the various functions and features of it. So we're going to move over here to my desktop. You can see my OBS there. I'm not gonna bother editing that out today. Um, we're on my main desktop on my Linux Mint Cinnamon. And um, now Linux Mint by default has this passwords and keys installed. And this is the one like, you know, I, the way I have this set up is if you go over to, uh, you know, if I go for example onto my Chromium, which is where I have my YouTube channel logged in, once I'm logged into my system, as long as your system requires a password to log in, it will automatically open up your passwords and keys. And then that will allow me to, any, any site system software or anything that I have the option to save a password, it will save it to passwords and keys. Once I'm logged into the system, it will automatically save those passwords. It's kind of like a passive thing. KeyPassX is a little bit more of an active way. So I did install this. It is available directly from the repository. Notice it is K-E-E-P-A-S-S-X. So it's KeyPass, it's not K-E-Y, it's K-E-E. 
Um, so when you first log this up, you'll see it just says welcome. It's completely blank. You might have a different toolbar. Uh, this is a different toolbar than the one I have on my Cubes computer, which is where I actually use this. Um, so regardless, uh, all the functionality should be the same. You just might have to use the menus a little bit more than the, than the toolbars. So what you need to do first is you need to establish a database. So you need to come up here and hit the new database. So each one of your databases are going to, uh, each one of these guys here are going to operate as a separate place to, to store things. You might produce a database for personal, a database for business. You might just use one database and use the internal set separation. So you need to enter a password here and I'm just going to type in password because which is a horribly bad password. Never, ever, ever do that. This is just for simplicity of, of showing you how to work this. So you can type in your password and if you come over here to the far right, you can click on this and see uh, in clear text what you actually typed in. You might wanna do that, verify that what you typed in is correct. Push okay and then now this gets us into this dialogue here. So inside of here we have, I'm just trying to see what we have. So we have open database, we have uh, the save the database, which you will need to do if you add a new entry. Um, and a new entry, this the the new entry is is what allows you to create a new a new password for a site. If you have something selected, then you will have the ability to edit the key or delete the key. Um, copy this copies the username and this copies the password to the clipboard. Note that it does copy it to the clipboard. And um, if you do not have, uh, you know, if you save, if you have something like, for example, on my uh, KDE computer, I have a, a clipboard manager here. You can actually go into there if you, if I were using something like this, it would actually save a copy of all of those things in the clipboard manager. So be wary of that. Um, so regardless, we're gonna go down here and hit add new entry. So under your new entry here, you will give it a title. And under your title, I just, uh, um, let's just say some website. And then what you need to do is enter in the username and the password. And then the URL is going to, uh, the U URL is going to give us the, um, uh, you know, like what is our login place. So, so let's just go, um, my username and your password, let's say uh, ABC123, which I kid you not, a client used once, their site was hacked and they're like, our site was hacked, can you help us out? Sure, I need access. Okay, here's our password, ABC123. Really? Really, bro? Really? So you can just go ahead and go ahead and type in whatever your information is. The expires here um, will set it so it will um, it will um, you know expire after that period of time. You can leave in some notes. Uh, log in to some website. All right. So here's your entry, here is your additional attributes. You can pick the icon that you wanna use. This is actually a little bit different than the the version that, that I have. I'm gonna look to see if, uh, uh, look look to see how much, how much different, whatever it happens to be, but okay. Because what I actually have is, um, let me just save this and see if that gets me, uh, gets me what I'm looking for. All right. So, okay, so, okay, it's, it's groups. It's because I've added groups over there. I did not add groups yet. Um, so this guy here is uh, inside of the root is the group, this is the default. Uh, this guy here over here is your, uh, your password. So it tells you what it is. Here's your username. Now some versions of this will keep the username and the password both in, uh, you know, in, in unclear text until you un unlock it. So I am working with a different version than I have on my, on my cube system. But regardless, um, I can come over here. You can see here's my username, here's my password. So I can uh, go in there and, and make it in the clear. But all I have to do is now that I'm on this, I can copy the username to the clipboard and I can copy the password to the clipboard. And then once I go ahead and, and use it, you know, I might do something goofy on the keyboard, just type A and copy that just so if somebody comes in, pushes control V somewhere, it's not the password for the last saved things I've used is in there. Um, 
Now, the next thing you can do is to organize these guys. Of course, here is your entries. Uh, you can add a new entry here. You can clone this entry, edit view, you know, all of these different things here. Um, and then groups, though, is what allows you to organize things. So I actually use the group setup because I have things organized into WordPress logins, hosting account logins. Oh, I found a password to my kitty. Say hi, kitty. Here's key pass X, everybody. It rocks. Um, and so uh, with this guy here, you can set up your 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 groups. That just allows me to have, you know, keep only just a few passwords. So if I need a hosting account for one of them, these organizations, all my hosting accounts are listed. If I have my WordPress login, all those are listed. I might have some FTP information, all those are listed. And you can actually come into here and you can change uh, change the icons. So the group you can see is this folder. So you can actually change this around to a lot of things. So I might want to change this to um, maybe personal passwords. And then changing the icon, let's do, let's see, there's a person there. Hey, there you go. There's a, there's a Linux penguin. So there your personal passwords might be here. So if I want to add a new group, I can go ahead and hit the add new and I might say work passwords. So you might have, depending on what you do for your work, you might have multiple different, uh, multiple different uh, things that you do at work and that you need your own passwords for uh, over there. And so what we're going to do here is let's just find something good. How about a dollar sign, right? It's work. So uh, we're going to uh, use that one. So push OK and then now uh, we should have uh, inside, here's your main personal, here is a group inside of there. Um, let's do another group. Just seeing the enable from, from parent is, um, we don't need social media. Actually, right now as I'm recording, like uh, recording this, I was, while this is processing, I'm going to go ahead and watch Brian Lunduke's how to remove your social media site. Uh, but anyway, social sites here. And then let's see what might be a good indication of social. There you go. This, oh, wait, wait, the world. There you go. It's a trendy thing there. Not sure why they keep on going. Oh, that's because I. Uh, didn't move them up there into the root. So if you, if I have this select and I hit group, it's going to keep on dro dropping it under groups. Uh, but you can drag and drop them back up. So the main the main one up here is your main root category. This folder is is missing from the other version I have. That's a little bit of a little bit of the difference here. Um, but then here I can do my work ones here. I can do my personal ones here. Um, I should be able to move this to a group. I thought I could, maybe I can't. Oh yeah, I can. There you go. So under your work, I can create my new one here. Work login. Okay, so then what you'll see here is if I if I click here on the work, it will give me all of the work passwords. If I come here to social media, it'll give me all the social media passwords. So I can create a separate group for each password type that I might have. You might have banks, you might have one for you know just miscellaneous, one for junk accounts, whatever else. So the groups allows you to keep things organized. Um, there's a toolbar, um, locking the database. What the locking the database does is if I click the lock the database, in this case, I haven't saved it yet. So I want to save it. And then you need to set where your database is going to save to. So, um, I'll just go ahead right now and save it to, uh, to documents. You might want to save it somewhere else, um, somewhere that is a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, uh, secure or hidden or something so you might want to do that mm. there we go 
must have just typed a wrong key there. All right. So locking the database, uh, what locking the database does here is it will get us to the point where we are logged out. And so you might do this if you're stepping away from your desk, go ahead and hit that lock, uh, lock database. That way everything's locked out and uh, no one can come over here. And what you need to do now is just come in and unlock it. So here we can just, the whoa, the cat just turned on Brian Lunduke. <laughs> Yeah, you turned on stuff. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Just need to log back in over here. All right. So there is that. Let's see if there's anything else we want to do in here. Let's have a quick look in the settings. I haven't looked in the settings before. At least not on this version. I don't think I have anyway. Automatically save on exit, open previous databases on startup. So you can have separate database files in here. Um, it will, by default, it will automatically open the whatever the last database was used. Um, so let me uh, see if I can remember how to get into, uh, into a different one. Just hit the open here and it will, you can navigate to your various locations. So there you go. So now that logs us right back in. So there it is. KeyPass uh, is very simple, um, but you can see you can add groups, you can customize your icons, you can put different things different places. I guess the next thing is under your database, um, you can import databases, you can export databases. Exporting to a C CSV file seems a little dangerous to me. But of course you can always just take the database file itself and transfer it as long as you're using it from, uh, as long as you're using it from, you know, KeePass X on this computer and to KeePass X on the other computer, you can just copy the, the, the database. Let me, uh, I'm going to export to, I'm going to go ahead and just export to the desktop here. I want to have a look at what that looks like as a CSV. So it does actually export things in the clear. So that is a little bit more of a dangerous option to use. Uh, make sure you're aware of that. But there are accurate, you know, there are actually reasons why you might want to do that. I keep my database, uh, my password database, in the clear, but on a encrypted uh, external hard drive. So. You know, I can uh, I can get into there. I would I need the master password to, to decrypt the the hard drive, and the hard drive is never on any computer. So that's usually what I do, and I just memorize the passwords I need the most. Um, and other than that, I really don't need it. If, you know, if I need to log into some obscure thing, I have it. But that's what I do. Um, changing the master key, database settings. Okay. So the import database is what you would use if you wanted to actually take a copy of the database and uh, transfer it over. Just use the import button to import it. All right, so there is KeePass X. Uh, just a real brief, you know, sorry my version's slightly different. Uh, this version of this computer is slightly different than the one I use, but you know, we were able to get in there. It's a fairly simple program. Um, but that is uh, that is how that works. Uh, so uh, with that, like I said, I just want to keep this uh, fairly short. Um, just do uh, do this quick one here, and I will uh, see you again tomorrow, whenever that happens to be. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you have a great Independence Day if you are here in America. Um, guys in the UK, I don't know how do you guys really feel about Fourth of July. I don't know. Um, and uh, for everybody else, I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.